Um, so when they, when they were rejoining, uh, uh, Doe said that they didn't want us using different names than they would have, because they were going to have some of them were going to have new Odie names, and uh, so uh, Doe didn't want to make a distinction between classmates, as as some looking older, you know. Uh, I think it was you know the uh, the thing that you know. There's a parable that Jesus gave about that, that even though the prodigal son, you know, went away and came ba and came back, he was he was still if he didn't work the whole time as much as the rest, he still got the same reward. You know, if you overcome in a year, when it takes somebody else 19 years, I mean, almost sufficiently to where you prove to Tiendo that you're trustworthy and that uh, that you want to be there, um, then then you, you got there. You both got there. So you get the same reward. You know, it's great. Uh, there shouldn't be any jealousy like that. That's a human way of having jealousy for that. Anyway, but, uh, so, <clears throat> so we use OD names. And then, and then uh, when we went public, we didn't use the OD names on, on the stage. I think I introduced myself as Sawyer. And so that's why uh, um, I don't think it's appropriate um, for new members, new believers, to take OD names. And if they do, you know, I'm not saying that anything lost, but uh, it, it does mean something. And so, and uh, if it meant something to T and O, then let them uh, give you an OD name. It's not a club. It makes it into a club and it cheapens it. And basically it makes you look like you're a disciple, like you were with Tien Do. And that's like, that's the way, that's what the Luciferians want. When they got Paul to try to be an apostle, it was like saying that I was with Jesus. And he wasn't. So it was a lie. So basically, if an individual chooses to, to do that, then they're choosing to be potentially part of a Luciferian lie. And how does Jesus say that the, the false prophets come? They come as sheep. They look like the holy ones. They look like the ones that were being made whole, the ones that were uh, in direct line to receive the direct information from the member from the next level and was adopted by the next level. Everybody gets their chance. And you, don't, you can be a believer without an Odi name and you move ahead of me, you might have already moved ahead of me. Just because I can talk it doesn't mean I'm overcoming the things that I need to overcome. So, uh, so it's just basically uh, an ego thing, you know, that, you know, I can understand wanting to use that name because wanting to associate in the same way, which you are. When you choose a name, that to you, and, and then, uh, you know, Tell Do the name you chose, or ask Do to name you, and see what comes. You know, to me that would be uh, the most next level thing you could do. Not that it would be wrong for you to choose your name, because T and Do didn't tell us in the beginning to, to ask them what names. They, they told us to choose names. And we didn't even get that directly. We got that from uh, the classmates that had joined before us, which there were, there were as many as a couple dozen before I joined. But um, I think less than that. But um, so. And then in this uh, website, well, there's one loose end on that thing with uh, T. Uh, those said that when we're traveling, that we were to focus on what's in front of us when we're traveling. We wouldn't, weren't supposed to, it was a discipline. There were a lot of disciplines that they gave us, a way of disciplining our minds. And uh, yes, it was, it's a washing of the brain and it's filling it with only our older member's mind instead of our human mind. We have the human mind. If we don't want to get rid of our human mind, then we shouldn't be in the classroom. Okay? 
It's only the next level. It's only the Luciferians that make it look like it's brainwashing by a dictator, a human dictator. It has everything to do with who's actually doing it and how they're doing it. Are they doing it because you want it from them? Then you're, they're your teacher. Um, or are they are doing it because if you don't do it, uh, you'll be locked up in prison. You know, or you'll be threatened with a fine. That's the way the humans uh, dictate uh, and brainwash. You know, um, say this over and over again, uh, whether you believe it or not, like they did in the Inquisition. It's a Luciferian thing. And why does Lucifer do that and gravitate to the religious? Why do, uh, are there so many Catholic clergy that uh, have uh, uh, given in to the influence that would um, use children for their sexual gratification? Um, because the Luciferians want to make them look bad. Because they're saying that they're holy, celibate, and, you know, all good, and saying prayers and giving their lives to God. And so, the, so, so they get more pressure, more influence, uh, and they're tricked more. And they're overcome with that Luciferian presence to where it's no excuse, but it's, it's part of the territory. I mean, their behavior is their behavior, and they're responsible for their behavior. I'm just saying, this is what happens to humans. And that's, what, that's why Jesus could say, uh, uh, forgive your enemies. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're being influenced by. So they're not all, and Jesus also said that uh, had they known better, they would be more, they would be responsible for what they did. Had they known. That's why once people know about Tian Do being the two witnesses, from Revelations chapter 11, and the woman and the man from Revelations chapter 12, and the man from uh, the apple white uh, uh, rider of the white horse, uh, do riding on the white horse with a bow in his hands, and the bow is the Greek word, a bow was uh, actually related to being a litter giving birth to a brew, uh, um, a litter of uh, newborns. Which is interesting that bow is also the term used uh, in the English word for whatever the word was in the Hebrew for, that we see as rainbow, which, which was really the covenant, which was the agreement that uh, Jehovah, the individual Jehovah, the person Jehovah, had the father, it was the same individual as T, uh, had agreed that he wasn't going to, uh, he, she, they weren't going to destroy, uh, recycle the planet by water this time. I think it's going to be dried up instead. Maybe that's why the mountains are good to go to because. Uh, Whatever water there is will first accumulate, be caught by the mountains, and so can be uh, directed into all the wells better. If you weren't in the mountains and it didn't dry up, well, global warming would make sense, right? That um, it was going to dry up. And look at Texas right now. And Texas is the, you know, and Tias. T E J A S, I believe, is the Spanish spelling, and it means the captain's cabin on the uh, on the ship, on the riverboat. And where did T and Do come from? Their vehicles, Texas. And uh, I'm not going to go there with all that, but uh, and. Uh, and bow is also, of course, the bow and peep. Like rainbow, bow, you got the bow and peep. And if you actually read that scripture in Genesis that talks about the rainbow, it almost sounds like it's talking about you making a covenant with bow. Bow is the covenant. 
who is Jesus? I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's my, my way. If you do things my way, the way I do things, which is going to be the things that my Father gives me to do and say, then by becoming that, basically you're becoming a Christ. You're becoming me. You're becoming anointed. You're getting the same task. Christ meant being anointed. You're get, being given the same task of basically overcoming your mammalian nature. Outgrowing your mammalian nature. So that you don't live for your senses. You're controlling your vehicle and you're telling your vehicle what senses it can be stimulated. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, it wasn't wrong to have pleasures. It just had to be the pleasures that T&D would give to us. So if you want to know what pleasures T and Doe gave to their students, uh, well, movies, TV, that were appropriate, you know, uh, they weren't, I don't think ever like, you know, violent, gory stuff like that. Um, they were like Murder, She Wrote, it was one, and uh, um, the mystery shows, and uh, game shows like uh, Price is Right we watched for a while uh, and um, um, but you know like E.T. and uh, Cocoon and, and uh, shows about uh, social uh, things because uh, the reason why this United States became a hub for rights, 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 was because the old members were here with their minds, and so that was like a light shining on the planet. And that made everything advance. Tindo said in the beginning that everything would be advancing, had the opportunity to advance. Didn't mean that everything would advance, uh, because what happens is uh, the negative gets more than negative, and the, uh, the good becomes more good. And good really has to do with a function, but it's also in how we treat each other in a respectful way, even our enemies. And that's why uh, there's really no place in the next level for name calling. And, um, and there's plenty of room in the next level for forgiveness of every kind. And so there is nobody that uh, that I know of that um, I mean, unless they did something to me personally. Uh, well, I, I'm not even going there because I'm not thinking about me personally. But um, when you do something to the next level information, that's the Holy Spirit you're doing something to. Because that can change the eyes of somebody else to look in a different direction or to or mis, be misguided or to think they're on the path but they're not. If we if we make the path into into what Tindo said, if we make it into something that we can put in the books and we can read about and say, okay, this is what's going to happen at the end of the next age. We are at the end of the next age, and this is what it said also on that Facebook account that we were preparing for the next age. That was making it so that you don't have to do anything now. When there's plenty to do right now. The older members were probably in that spacecraft that showed up uh, near Mercury. That the Stereo B spacecraft took pictures of. And that's why uh, there's going to be more opportunity now. Because uh, the saints are back. The ones that graduated are back and they're doing the work of gathering all the believers. But what they're doing is basically they're facilitating, I believe, um, the souls that were brought back uh, finding vehicles. And I suspect there's 144 of those. And then there'll be a, probably another thousand that are related to those. There is like a hierarchy. Because when, 
when the next level works with a civilization, they're working on a three trimester uh, birth process. So the souls are born from, from human vehicles. In other words, the next level gives us a seed, which is a little piece of themselves, which has, has a set of programs in it. Those programs are basically an interface, a, a genuine interface, that you, you know there is a Lord. You know there is a creator. You just know it inside. You don't have to talk, think about it in a religious form or any, any term. You know this. there are people that created this place. There's something that created this place that, uh, that is real. It's not just an etheric blob of uh, nothingness that just made everything come together in this completely organized way down to the genome. Just computers within computers within computers that grow biologically and adapt biologically and also stimulate mind development, which is the programming that is basically all our experiences that is offloaded when the vehicle dies. And then that, so when you have an experience with an older member that's physically incarnate with you, like the people did in the Moses days, then if you try to do everything the best you can to live by what Moses gives us to live by, no matter how irrational you might think it is, if you still try to follow it to the best of your ability, then you are absorbing and using the mind that's coming from Moses, that came from Jehovah, Moses' older member, T to Do, the Father to Jesus, Jehovah to Moses, uh, Jehovah to uh, Adam, Jehovah to Enoch, um, Jehovah to Abraham, potentially. I don't, Do didn't talk much about Abraham that I can recall. So I don't know. I'm not going to try to add in my own interpretations in this regard. I know I do sometimes uh, think about what's possible, and I don't think that's necessarily wrong, but uh, it definitely needs to be distinguished when I'm talking about what Tian Do said and did. But, um, uh, so, then, so then when that vehicle is gone, then that soul is ta taken, that soul pocket is taken that has that next level mind in it, uh, that, was extra, that was decided upon. Well, we are as the decider. So, and is brought back, to now it's going to associate with the same genetic strain that's now a couple thousand, a thousand or two thousand years later, uh, uh, has gone through a lot of stuff and has been more science and more awareness of certain things and, and more development in, in governments and things like that. And so there, there's a potential for more reality to be taught. So now the older member is going to be told, is going to be given to us as a parent. Uh, a parent teacher, like because he's trying to show us that this is a new family that we're actually becoming a part of. They are people. It's a, it's a kingdom. It's many membered, but there's a hierarchy structure. Now, in order for those souls to be brought back, um, they have to be, be brought back to a vehicle that is also given a soul. But it's a different. But. Uh, but the soul brought back has all this experience. The soul that's given is kind of like an empty pocket with some basic programming in it, like I said, interfacing knowing that the next level exists. And so, so the object is to get the mind of the soul that's coming back into the soul of the vehicle that's... Um, Uh, being born for the first time. And so that's the first trimester birth for that, and it's the second trimester for the one coming back. Okay, so... I was starting to see that a little bit clearer, I think, because everything I say is subject to a more accurate description.
But I believe this works for now. Doesn't mean it's inaccurate when I say that, because I used to think that when TNW would say it. It just works for now. How can that be? I mean, it's accurate or it's not. You know, I, I had those subtle thoughts. They weren't like blaring thoughts. That was like, oh my gosh, they can't be who they are because... I mean, not that some people wouldn't have that. It's not like you're bad if you have that, those doubts. It's, uh, you know, so everyone's package is going to be a little different in what they deal with and to what degree they deal with something. And uh, so... So that's the reason I was saying that is because what Tindo said that the grass, blades of grass grow at a different rate. So one might be a little taller. So there's no negative in uh, having older members or having uh, students that have more experience to pull. And there's also in tasks, there's primaries and secondaries. So for instance, and that doesn't necessarily have to do with uh, um, how long you've been a member of the next level because it's in the next level that this is what we're talking about. So, but it might have, it would have to do with exactly how much experience you have on any task. So, I mean, if, if there was bread baking in the next level, which I don't believe there is, um, if somebody was in that department baking bread for, and they learned everything that they could learn about baking bread according to what their older members gave them and all the ways they were doing things in the past and, and all the new things that the older members would give to try to do new things. Uh, and all of, and, and then the older members, when they give you new things, they don't necessarily say, here's all the steps. No, they say, think on this, make me a proposal on how you would do this. See, there's always challenges. You're not a robot in the next level. They ask you to use your mind, but they expect you to try to pull from their mind how they would do it. But they're, but they're making you grab for it. And what that does is it, it creates a thirst. It's actually a literal sucking that you're doing and you're re receiving uh, perhaps through the eyes. I believe Tindo did say that. Well, and Jesus said that the light, uh, when, you're, I, when you have a single focus, your whole body is filled with light. So if your single focus is to do things the way your older member would do them, then you're filled with light. So your desire is to know what your older member would do. So you would like your older member to actually tell you, here's the steps, blah, 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 blah. Do it this way. And it'll come out the way I want it to come out. You know, the recipe is a cup of flour. Measure it this way. And we were taught that way. That's why everything that we did in the group was teaching us how to do things in the next level when the experiments matter more. So T was very particular. In fact, T corrected me a number of times, said that when I needed the bread, I wasn't gentle enough. 